by the Spirit of God. Amen. May the Spirit of the Lord Jesus, which was promised you and me, I pray this hour together with you that let that Holy Spirit come and speak to us. Amen. Minister to you and me and teach us into all truth. I pray that the Spirit of truth will be the one that will guide us into the truth of God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I want us to first of all look at 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. And let's see something. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. Glory to Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Listen. He said if we say we have no sin, then we are deceiving ourselves, number one. It's like you are telling yourself you are rich, but you are not rich. You are deceiving yourself. And the Bible said that the truth is not in us. But when we come to the book of John, the Bible said the hour has come, and now is the hour that the true worshippers will worship the Lord in truth. So, child of God, if First John chapter one verse eight is telling you and me that the truth is not in us, are we truly worshiping God? No. No. He said in the end time, in the latter days, the true worshippers will worship the Lord, and these are the ones that the Lord seek. We don't have much time, one hour. Listen. So the Bible says, if you and I say there is no sin in us, then the truth is not in us. Now, if the truth is not in us, then it means God is not seeking for you. No. The Bible says, such are those that the Lord seeketh. It is so sad that this very fundamental truth is ignored in today's church. It's ignored. Listen, church has been made in such a way that just as you are, you just come and you are blessed. No, just as you are, the Lord will save you. Just as you are, the Lord will save you, will deliver you. The Lord will give you salvation just as you are. But after that, what? After the salvation, I pray that on our journey to prevail in the eleventh hour, Amen. may God grant us an understanding. Amen. People of God, why am I talking about sanctification? Sanctification is part of the process of preparation. Anytime God is about to do a major thing, He requires the people for sanctification. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. What is sanctification? Setting apart. Set apart. I pray today in the name of Jesus that the Lord will set our hearts and know our hearts. And if there is any sin in us, let the mercies of God let the mercies of God locate us so that we will walk in the way of true sanctification. For the Bible said, if we say there is no sin, then the truth is not in us. But the hour has come, and such is the hour, that those who truly worship God will worship God in truth and in spirit. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Listen. The deception in the church is too much. 
the deception is just too much. And the Bible said Jesus is the light. He is not just an ordinary light, but a light that brings revelation, illumination, illumination, revelation. And I pray that the church of Christ this day will go back to our first love. Revelations 2 chapter 4, the Lord said he has something against us because we have ignored and abandoned our first love. And I pray today in the name of Jesus that we will come back to that place in the name of Jesus. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. Help us, Lord. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. The Lord will do wonders among you. On our journey to prevail in the eleventh hour, people of God, we cannot prevail until we are adequately prepared. Don't deceive yourself to think that without preparation, you will prevail. There is no business under the cosmos that has been adequately or successfully be achieved without preparation. There is no successful business in this life that can be achieved without adequate preparation. Don't lie to yourself. So as we are going towards prevailing in the 11th hour, my question is, how well are we prepared? How well are we prepared? You are excited to get that miracle. You are excited to prevail. But the question is, how prepared are you? How prepared? You see, I tell people most of the time, opportunities are always available. But when opportunity comes, and the opportunity comes to meet preparation, that is when a miracle takes place. Anytime Jesus wants to heal somebody, he said, do you want to be healed? The master wants to ascertain whether you are ready for the miracle. The master wants to find out whether you are prepared for the miracle before the miracle takes place. Because Jesus coming is an opportunity for the miracle. But when Jesus comes, your preparation will determine the manifestation. So somebody sat at the pool by 38 years. When Jesus went there, the guy was just talking. Talking grammar. I've been here this and this and that. And Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Preparation. If you are not prepared, the miracle will not take place. The Bible said, from Jesus' own hometown, the people were not prepared to accept him as a prophet. The opportunity was there with Christ. In the house of Christ was a miracle and a blessing. But the people from his hometown were not prepared. So the Bible said he could not. Not that he did not. When he presses the button, nothing happens. He could not, not he did not. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. He says, sanctify them. Let the people be sanctified. Because tomorrow, the Lord is about to do wonders. How much do we play emphasis on sanctification? Mm. A 
and we always go to church. We expect a miracle that will last. And we have ignored the subject of sanctification. In the church nowadays, this subject is one of the most scarce subjects in the church. Popular ones are miracles, signs and wonders. Tomorrow by this time, they are the popular mantras in churches. But I pray today in the name of Jesus Amen. that God will make you an agent of change. Amen. An agent of change. I pray that God will select you. Amen. I pray that the Lord will anoint you to pursue sanctification as a key requirement Amen. to please the Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Joshua chapter 7 verse 30. Help us God. Help us God. We need your help. Lord we need your help. In the same time. For many people. Have ignored. The basic foundations. And the basic pillars. Of our service. To Yehovah. Verse 13. He said, Get up. Sanctify the people. And say, Sanctify yourself for tomorrow. Because thus saith the Lord God. There is an accusation. There is an accusation in the midst of the people. Why must we need sanctification? The Lord told Joshua in Joshua 7:13 that get up and sanctify the people for tomorrow. Because there is something that is cast in the midst of the people. We may sit down and say, oh, maybe me, I haven't done anything wrong. But the Bible says, listen, it is not you doing something wrong that makes you become contaminated. The Bible says, if we know how to do good and we fail to do the good, it is counted as sin. How many times have God spoken to you concerning something that you can do or you should have done in order to bless somebody or glorify God and you refuse to do it? Don't talk about adultery. Don't talk about stealing. I am also talking about when we know how to do good and we fail to do it. Scripture defined that as sin. You are standing by. The sister is always sinning. You are a very good counselor. God has given you that gift to counsel people. Did you call the sister to counsel her? You are only excited in telling other people about what that brother or sister does. And the Lord said to you and me, for refusing to do that which we ought to do, it's a sin. Do you wake up every day and ask God, what have you got for me to do? So that it shall be registered as righteousness. When good people sit down for evil people to operate, the consequences 
also affect the good. Isaiah 59, verse 2. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 59, verse 2. He said, Behold, from the verse 1, the hand of God is not short. The hand of God is not short. That he cannot say. Not that the ear of God so heavy that he cannot hear. But why is the Lord not saving? Why is the Lord not hearing? Verse 2. He said, but your iniquities, your sins, your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that the Lord will not hear. That is why it is very important for us to go to that place of sanctification. Micah chapter 3 and verse 4. Micah 3, 4. People of God, God is speaking to somebody. Oh, yes. God is speaking to somebody. Because many people are going to die because they don't want to heed to the hear the word of God. When the Bible says is the, the hand of God short, so that you could not say, it means that there is going to be a time that God will not stretch his hand to save. Listen, I got to be truthful with you. I got to be truthful. A time is coming. The Lord will not stretch his hand to save some people. The Lord is not going to stretch his hands and save some people. Hey. We are all talking about grace. But the Bible says in the book of Romans, shall we continue to sin so that grace will abound? The Bible says, God forbid. The Bible says, God forbid. It means that it is an abomination unto the Lord for us to stand continuously in sin because of grace. You may not like this. You may want us to tell you tomorrow by this time. But let me tell you, there is no guarantee tomorrow without God in the center. There is no guarantee tomorrow without Christ as the center. Any tomorrow of your life where that Christ as your center has no longevity. He has no future. Oh, yes. Micah chapter 3 verse 4 He said, Then shall they cry Then shall they cry unto the Lord but he will not hear them he will even hide his face from them at that time the Lord will hide his face as they have behaved themselves in their sinful ways They will cry. Child of God, let me tell you. We serve a just God. Why must God punish the unbelievers? Why must God punish the worldly people? 
that he himself created. Because of their disobedience, I spare you when you refuse to repent. Then he's not a just God. But the Lord is a just God. And because God is a just God, he has to judge rightly and with righteous judgment. Righteous judgment. He said, let them 
sanctify themselves in Joshua 7 13. Otherwise, they cannot prevail against the accursed. Satan was fighting against the blessing of the people of God. And the Bible said there was somebody that was cast in the midst of the Israelites. And the Bible said the Lord instructed Joshua that before you guys can prevail over your enemies, you got to be sanctified. Listen to me. You are deceiving yourself to think that your battle against the demons, you will win it. It is not true. As a matter of fact, you are going to commit suicide, spiritual suicide, by trying to go into that battle without preparation and without sanctification. I am telling you, you will come out as a casualty. The fact that physically you are not dead does not mean that you have won the battle. Don't deceive yourself. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. that there is a battle ahead of us. We are supposed to win the battle of the eleventh tower. And I pray by the Spirit of the Lord that may the Spirit and the desire for sanctification come upon you so strong that as we go for battles, we shall win the battles. As we go for battles, we shall win the battles. In the name that is above every name, in the name that is above every name. Amen. Even in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even in the name of Jesus. May we win the battle of sanctification. Amen. May we win the battle of sanctification. Amen. May we win the battle of sanctification. Amen. May we win the battle of sanctification. This is the subject that will make my work easy. This is that work. This is the journey that will make the work easy for men of God. But this is why church, Satan take them away from something like this. Because Satan has laid a snare for many souls. Satan has laid a snare. Child of God. I say Satan has led the snare. I was talking to one of my daughters today, and we realized that what the voice that will bless that girl, they are trying to close her ears from that voice. And they are rather turning her ears to test that may destroy her miracle. And that is what the devil is doing now. The messages that can deliver. Satan closes our ears. Oh, yes. We come to the place and Satan said, get out. I can't bless you. Get out. This is not what you need. But when you come and they are making empty noises. Empty noises. To awaken the sleeping satanic dogs. That is when they get involved. And when they awaken the satanic dogs, those dogs go after them. But I pray today in the name of Jesus that the Almighty God will sanctify you. That the Almighty God will take you through the process of sanctification. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. The Bible says without holiness. Mm. Without holiness. 
Nobody can see God. Why are we deceiving ourselves? To think that with that sanctification, with that holiness, God will welcome us. Isaiah 59 2 said, Our sins have made us God to turn away. Micah 3 4 said, We cried unto the Lord, but the Lord did not hear. We cried unto the Lord, but the Lord turned away his face. Why? Because of our sins. People of God, let me tell you. As we go to church, your state and your condition will determine whether the master will hear or not hear. I pray for you today. That may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the love of God, Amen. and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Amen. will come and rest on your spirit. Amen. Have you resisted sin to the point of death? Not yet. Amen. Not yet. Amen. You have not got to the place where you saw temptation. And you said to myself, I don't care if they kill me. I am not ready to deny my God. I am not ready to compromise on my spirituality. I am not ready. We have seen great men. People like Daniel. People like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They resisted. They resisted sin to the point of their blood. They resisted sin to the point of losing their life. But you know what? Jesus said if you are ready to give up your life, then you will take my life. Nobody sacrifices for the sake of Christ and the master's blood will not speak for you. We have not come to that point yet. The church is deceiving the members. The church has not happened. The message of sanctification, the message of standing for God has been ignored. For far too long. But the Lord sent me to tell you that on our way to prevail in the eleventh hour, preparation is all that counts. And when I talk about preparation, I'm talking about sanctification. He says, Sanctify yourself for tomorrow. I am about to do wonders. Sanctify yourself in the book of Joshua 13 because there is an accursed in your midst. And if you don't deal with the accursed, you will lose the battle with your enemies. The life of the believer is always a battle. But child of God, how many are you winning? How many battles are you winning? I pray for you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. For those on Facebook, those on YouTube, those on the you, may the hand of God come upon you. May you have that strong desire to pursue after holiness. To pursue after righteousness. And to pursue after Hagiosmos sanctification. Hagiosmos. Get to that place of Kadash. Get to that mountain of Kadash. Where you will see God. That oh God, sanctify me. Sanctify me for your use. 
Sanctify me for your purpose. Sanctify me for your use. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May His countenance shine upon us. Amen. And may the Lord be gracious unto us. Amen. And may God grant us the desire to test after holiness and after Amen. righteousness. Amen. Nobody has ever given all to Christ Amen. and lost everything. It has never happened. Amen. Nobody has ever given all to Christ and lost something. Amen. I came to provoke you yes, that on our loving days to prevail in the loving hour Amen. without adequate preparation sanctification Amen. there is no way you can make it Amen. because opportunities without preparation they don't create miracles oh, yeah. the only moment miracles take place is when the opportunity comes when the favor time comes and you are prepared so Jesus asked them, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be saved? The master wanted to find out whether the recipients of miracles were actually prepared. You know why you haven't got a miracle? In the sight of God, nothing shows that you are prepared. There is no level of sanctification that can get you that miracle. So my dear brother, my dear sister, son and daughters of God, let us go to that gate, that gate of sanctification, and say, Father, we have come. You cannot work out your own salvation. The same thing applies with sanctification. Sanctification cannot be attained by initiation. It is only attained by cooperation and cooperating with the Spirit of the Lord. I will come back your way again when the Lord gives us it. He said, It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. How we have proved him over and over. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace, we will trust you more. Amen. Because grace abounds, we will trust you more. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace! Oh, for grace! Oh, for grace! May God bless you. Child of God, we are coming back again. The lost remnants are coming home. We are coming back to the Father. He said, I have something against you. In Revelation chapter 2 4. What have you got against me, Papa? And Papa said, Because you have thrown away your first love. So he said, Go back and take it. It is so terrible and dangerous to fall in the hands of God. I don't want God to be against me, you know. Man can be against me. And the Lord can be my Savior and Redeemer. Amen. But if God is against me, who can step in for me? I love all of you with the love of God. I cherish you, people of God, and I salute you. You see, these messages, churches don't want to today. So when I see people who are yearning for such a message, then I know that we are determined to make it to heaven. And I love you all with the love of God. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will overshadow you. Amen. May the Lord place it upon your spirit and your soul. Amen. 
as the deer panted after the water, that you and I will test after righteousness. We will test after sanctification. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So when we walk with the Lord, in the light of His Word, in the light of His Word, whilst we do His good will, it is all about sanctification. He abides with us all the time. And with all who will trust and obey. For there is no other way. No other way. Scripture said no other way. So that joy you have received without holiness. Let me tell you, it's counterfeit. No, no, it is counterfeit. But to trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there is no other way hey, to be happy in Jesus. But to trust Hakabula Mahakadaba. When we walk with the Lord. In the light of his word, what a glow, right here, shine on our way. Hey, what we do? His good will. He will abide where I stop. And with all power trust. And open he comes. Trust and open For there is no other way to do a devotion to the Jesus but to trust. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Oh. For there is no other way, there is no other way to be happy, Jesus, but to trust. May God bless you. I'll come back your way when the Lord give us the grace by tomorrow. But with this song that is ending our service, let us sink into your soul. There is no other way. There is no other way but to trust and obey. May God bless you and come back again. Shalom to everybody. May God bless all of you. Everybody that participated. You are so much dear in my heart. And I'll keep praying for you. I'll keep praying for you. That you and I will make that mark. You and I will make that mark. Amen. You and I will make that mark. God bless Amen. you. Shalom. Thank you. God bless you all.